Good morning. I'm Assemblymember Lori Wilson. I represent the 11th District, which includes the whole of Solano County, parts of East Contra Costa County, and Sacramento County. It is an absolute pleasure to be here today. I'd like to first welcome those who are here in attendance with me, everyone who is standing in solidarity with us this morning and this moment. I am honored to be joined by some of my colleagues in the legislature, in the legislature including Assemblymember Haney, who's one of the co-authors of the bill and will be joined by others later, and also community members to announce the introduction of the End Slavery in California Act. Yes, the End Slavery, yes, let's, let's. The End Slavery in California Act would amend our state constitution to remove involuntary servitude and abolish all forms of slavery once and for all. This morning we will have the opportunity to listen from legislatures and individuals who have been fighting the good fight. Individuals have been directly impacted by this injustice that exists in our state constitution. I am introducing this legislation because at every position of leadership, from commissioner to council member, from vice mayor to mayor, and now a state legislator, one of my chief responsibilities was and is to end systematic racism and root out discrimination in all its forms. As chair of the California Legislative Black Caucus, I am charged with protecting the interests of black Californians. Although we only make up 6% of the overall population, we make up 28% of our incarcerated population. The allowance of slavery in our prisons disproportionately impacts black people. Those of a community still impacted by the aftermath of slavery in our country. I am proud to carry on the work of Samuel Nathaniel Brown, who's going to be speaking later today, the original author of the 2021 ACA 3, former Senator and now Congresswoman Sidney Kamlager, who introduced the bill. This constitutional amendment is now a national movement. California is among only 16 states with an exception clause for involuntary servitude in its state constitution. Most recently, voters in Alabama, Oregon, Tennessee and Vermont removed involuntary servitude language from their state constitution. This constitutional amendment is an opportunity to counter ourselves to these states and serve as models for others in the nation. Involuntary servitude is without a doubt an extension of slavery. California was founded as a free state. There is no room for slavery in our constitution, it is not consistent with our values nor our humanity, definitely not in 2023. The legacy of slavery and forced labor runs deep in our history. From the exploitation of indigenous people in the Spanish missions to black slaves being forced to mine for gold. Today, slavery takes on the modern form of involuntary servitude, including forced labor in prisons. Every incarcerated person currently gets assigned to specific work without choice in the type of job or work schedules when they enter prison. When incarcerated people turn down work assignments or are unable to report to work, such as when they are sick or sustain injuries, they are often, often retaliated against in cruel ways. Punishment includes physical violence, denial of phone calls and family visits, solitary confinement, and extension of their sentences. It is dehumanizing and should stop. Slavery is wrong in all its forms, and California, of all states, should be clear in denouncing that in its constitution. This constitutional amendment prioritizes rehabilitation for incarcerated people, which is something we all should want. Incarcerated people should be able to choose jobs and shifts that allow them to continue their education, use the law library, get counseling, and participate in other rehabilitative programs that facilitate growth and transformation. Likewise, they should be able to choose jobs that align with their skills and work interests to better, them position, to better position them to secure a job when they get out, which in turn increase community stability and reduce recidivism. Now, most incarcerated people want to work 
people in prison still have expenses. Common ones include necessities such as hygiene items, more food and clothing, and medical or health care health related devices. Telephone, electronic, and snail mail communication with loved ones also cost money. People may have restitution or child support to pay, or simply try to share what meager earnings they have with low-income families. Threatening and punishing them to work is unnecessary and dehumanizing. With that, I would like to move on. I'm happy um, to introduce Jamila Land to highlight the importance of California in this national effort. She's with the Abolish Slavery National Network. Good morning. Uh, so my name is Jamelia Land. I am one of three co-directors of state operations for the Abolish Slavery National Network. We are a national coalition that is seeking to remove involuntary servitude from each and every state's constitution that possesses this language. Um, as our lovely assembly members stated earlier, this past November, we were successful in getting four out of the five states that were on the ballot successfully passed, including Alabama. And if any of you know the history of slavery in the United States of America and its roots in Alabama, then you will know that it is absolutely disgraceful that California was unsuccessful in passing this piece of legislation last year. And so we are very, very proud and grateful to have California once again at the table. Uh, hopefully this year, we will successfully get this piece of legislation through. Um, I would like to state that so far, we have been successful in abolishing legalized slavery in Alabama, Colorado, Nebraska, Oregon. Rhode Island was the first state, actually, uh, that did not need a constitutional amendment. Tennessee, Utah, and Vermont. And I am also proud to announce today that we currently have over 12 states that we have onboarded that are all seeking to remove this language from their respective states' constitutions. Those states are California, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Arkansas, Michigan, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Texas, and Virginia. Amen. In addition to that, uh, we also are currently housing the United States Abolition Act, which was authored by Senator Jeff Merkley out of Oregon, as well as Congresswoman Nakima Williams. And so with that, I'm going to pass it back to you. Thank you so much, Jamelia. I am proud to stand with you in this work. Next, I would like to introduce Geronimo Aguiar from Legal Services for Prisoners with Children to discuss the impacts of slavery on indigenous and Latinx people. Thank you, Assembly Member Wilson, for your leadership. Thank you all for being here, um, and all the other members of the legislature that have taken the time to be here for this historic moment. Uh, and I also, uh, first and foremost, would like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the opportunity to speak um, on this on this historic legislation. Um, so I, I, you know, I want to start off first of all saying that uh, I'd like to acknowledge also where we stand. Sacramento is the ancestral homeland of the Nisenan, Maidu, Miwok, and Miwok peoples, who are the indigenous peoples of this land and have lived here since time immemorial. I have grown up with the notion that you don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. And I thank my pops for that wisdom. I want to take us back to 1850, around the time when California gained statehood after, brutal, after the brutal expansionist war against Mexico, specifically the 1850 Act for Government and Protection of Indians, which began to codify the terrorism that was being inflicted upon Native peoples. It was a vagrancy law which criminalized Native people in order to exploit their labor and pay their so-called debt back to society. It was these type of laws which are known by indigenous peoples in California as the Red Codes. These Red Codes served as a model for the Deep South and led to the same utilization of the criminal justice system to dehumanize and enslave African and indigenous peoples. 1855 saw the Greaser Act, which was a vagrancy law targeting those of Spanish and Indian blood, which we know are folks like myself, Chicanos, Mexicanos, and all my indigenous Latinos. It made it a crime to be brown in the state of California. I share all this to uncover the state's reliance on cheap and free labor. 
throughout history which has made our current system almost invisible. But there is a better way. Today, no matter if you're white, brown, black, red, or yellow, if you get caught up in the system, you will inevitably be forced to work and have your body become a vessel of economic exploitation. This is a history that should be made just that, history. But until we change things, this history will continue being our current day reality. Let's create a California that doesn't wet itself to exploitation, but rather to love and redemption. Thank you. Thank you so much, Renama. Thank you for your um, service in this great work. Our next guest is Samuel Brown with the Anti-Violence Safety and Accountability Project, also known as ASAP. Samuel will share his lived experience as a formerly incarcerated individual, as well as noted he was the original author of this bill. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Assemblymember Wilson. And I just want to start out by saying this is the End Slavery in California Act. So when I say hashtag, I want y'all to say End Slavery in California. Hashtag in slavery in California. Hashtag in slavery in California. One more time. Hashtag in slavery in California. And that's what we're going to do, right? And so, as Assemblymember Wilson noted, I was the original author of this legislation, and I wrote it in my cell while I was incarcerated with a life sentence. But I want to make it clear that abolishing slavery did not start with Samuel and Daniel Brown. This is something that we've been trying to do for a long time too long and now we have an opportunity to actually get it done and though you heard assembly member wilson say that she represents the california black caucus and that we are disproportionately incarcerated i want to make clear to also that this is not a black issue this is not a white issue this is an everybody issue you understand when article one section six of the california constitution was approved it was in 1879 at that time the 13th Amendment was only 14 years old. 14 years old. And a decision to take slavery from the rural areas in the South and put it across the entire nation behind prison fences was made by the 39th Congress. And let me ask you, how many people in that room do you think were black? How many do you think were Hispanic? How many were female? Not one. And they made this life-altering decision that would impact us for ages to come. And now here we are in 2023 with an opportunity to stamp it out once and for all. You know, I just want to say this real quick, that in 1908, the Model T was made, right? Here we are in 2023 and we're driving the Model S. If the same laws that were utilized in 1865 and 1879 were not working then, how is it that we evolved the automobile that we drive and not the laws that govern us? It's not commonsensical. You understand what I'm saying? So my lived experience I want to share with you briefly. As I stand before you today, I have an associate to arts and social science, an associate to arts transfer degree in sociology. I graduated magna cum laude from California State University, uh, Los Angeles communication studies, I've taken thousands of hours of self-help programming, anger management, stress management, written the entire curriculum for the 10P program, the Boys to Men workshop, Life Empowerment Group, Survival Fender Mediation Seminar, you name it. All I needed to get was one disciplinary report from failing to report to work, and they would have deemed me as an unreasonable risk to society and denied me the opportunity to come home. I want to put that in perspective for you. I could go years, disciplinary free, involve myself in every rehabilitative opportunity that's known to me. And if I refuse to go to work for one day, which was why this bill was written to begin with, because I was the first person in the state of California to have to go inside of a cell in a carceral setting and disinfect when somebody tested positive for COVID. And I told my supervisors, I'm like, I'm terrified for my life. A lot of people are dying across the world and I don't want to walk up in here and not know what to expect, so I'm not going to come to work today. And they threatened me with the modern day whip, which is the 115, and said, if you don't report to work, you're going to get this 115. And what that 115 would have did for me, it would have gave me 15 more years, a 15 year denial in prison. 
And if there was mitigating evidence, then a 10-year denial, then a 7-year denial, then a 5-year denial, then a 3-year denial. And it would have negated all of the hard work. So this is what modern-day slavery looks like. In addition to what Geronimo talked about it being an economic engine for those who ravish black and brown and impoverished communities, this is what it looks like. So we have an opportunity to stamp it out once and for all, and we're not going to stop until we get it done. So when I say hashtag, y'all say end slavery in California. Hashtag end slavery in California. Thank you. Just thinking about how fearful we all were when we first heard about COVID-19 and imagining having to go into a cell and clean that and wanting to decide for yourself that you wanted to live and how that can jeopardize your ability to return home. I want you to just sit with that for a moment. How scared some of you are to leave your house, to even take your groceries in the house without washing them down. How if somebody coughed or sneezed near you, it was no longer bless you, you had words for that person. <laughs> Just say, I want you to think about that for a moment. What he was experiencing, and the danger was, I could delay my future by saying yes to this. I might not even have a future if I show up to work. That can't be in our state. I would like to introduce the chair of Budget Sub-5 Subcommittee on Public Safety, my colleague and good friend, Assembly Member Mia Bonta. Good morning. How are we doing today? Good morning. Are we trying to end slavery in California today? Yes. Yes, we are. I'm Assembly Member Mia Bonta. I represent proudly California's 18th district, which is Oakland, Alameda, and Emeryville. And I am the chair of Budget Sub 5, which is about public safety, which is about making sure that our resources are being put to good use in our prison system. And I appreciate Assembly Member Wilson, my chair of the California Legislative Black Caucus, and her leadership in forwarding this resolution today. Slavery has a long history in our country. I don't even need to say it, it is the truth. But the reality is that slavery has a current existence in our country and in our state because of the way that we deny an opportunity for people to choose the work they want, want to do, even when they are in our prison systems. We know that indentured servitude exists, and in some sectors, we have taken active and proactive approaches to end that practice. I'm thinking about domestic workers who have a long history of working long hours every single day for very little pay and even less protections. The legislature has passed policies over the years to lift them up, including the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights. Indentured servitude is another form of slavery, make no mistake about it. And for reasons I cannot understand, and frankly refuse to understand, our Constitution allows the legacy of slavery to still exist by affirming that indentured servitude is okay if it occurs in the context of the punishment of crime. Dissolving the remnants of slavery and racial inequality is more important now than ever. Our state constitution has yet to reflect the values of equality and justice that Californians now hold so dear. And so here we stand with yet another opportunity to right the wrongs that are happening today. Our brother spoke, we need to listen. Our brothers and sisters are speaking about the way in which they fear, like let alone the fact that they're not being paid a prevailing wage while they are working and building up our communities from inside prison walls. Let's put that aside just for a minute. Let's talk about the fact that they fear punishment for refusing to show up to work that they need to put their lives on the line in order to be able to show up to work in our prison system. And that they cannot, do not have the opportunity, ability, say so, aside from risking their future ability to be a part of our communities, they cannot say no. That is the definition, the quintessential definition of slavery. And for us to stand in this fine state of California 
and look each other in the eye, look each other in the face and the soul and say, you know what, we're okay with that. That's not okay with me. That is not okay with my sister. That is not okay with my brothers. It is not okay. No. So the next time this comes before the California State Legislature and heads to the governor, because we will make sure that it gets to the governor's desk, yeah. we are going to require that we live and abide by our basic humanity, our basic dignity, and our basic responsibility as legislators to end slavery in California. With this act, under our leadership of Assemblymember Wilson, my chair, we can do this. I have hope. I have faith. I will pray with whoever needs to be prayed with <laughs> that we can get this done. Because it is, it is right, it is righteous, and it is what we must do. Let's end slavery now in California. Thank you. Yes, and amen on that one. I heard that in my ear from somebody, so I'll echo that. I felt like we needed to pass the bucket after that. Senator <laughs> Bonta. All right, last but not least, we will hear from Aliyah Muhammad with All of Us or None of Us. Aliyah will be sharing a powerful message as a formerly incarcerated firefighter. My name is Aliyah Muhammad. I'm employed with Legal Services for Prisoners with Children and a proud member of All of Us or None. When I was a slave of the state, I was known as W029515. I was an inmate firefighter at Camp Porter La Cruz in Warner Springs, California. The training we received was only hiking. We would hike three and a half miles several times a week. We depended on the, the experienced inmate firefighters once fire season began. While I was at fire camp, my pay slot was at the top of the CDCR pay scale. While others earned eight cents, 11 cents, 34 cents an hour, I earned a whopping $1 an hour, but only while fighting a fire. If we stayed overnight where we slept on the ground, I earned 24 hours for that day. These are the same furious fires that caused fatalities, burned hundreds of homes and structures these past few years here in California. These, these fires are fought by inmate firefighters also. I was blessed to have family and friends support me while I was at the camp. But there were other women who didn't have the support and no funds available until, they were, until there was a fire. How far can $24 go when dollar store items are sold at, on the commissary for $4.95? When fire season starts this year and you see coverage on your local news, look for the people in the orange jumpsuits. These people are your inmate firefighters on the front line, risking their lives for $1 an hour. Keep your eyes open, because in California, punishment makes slavery look invisible. I support this End Slavery in California Act, and you should too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank everyone for being here today and standing in solidarity with us to ensure that this time we end slavery in California. Thank you to all of our sponsors of this bill and all of the assembly staff, DCO and DGS, who helped make this event possible. And of course, all of our co-authors. We currently have assembly member Haney, Lowe, Ortega, Connolly, Santiago, Carillo, Ting, Rubio, Calra, Poppin, and Bonta. Senators Skinner, Weiner, Durazo, Porrentino, and Dodd, and more are being added each and every day. We appreciate all of you for being here. We appreciate you once again for standing with us in solidarity. And I, of course, have to give a shout out to my team 
who helped make everything I do possible. Thank you to Team AD11, and thank you for every single person standing here. And know for our people who are in our prisons, we are here for you. We're ready to stand and fight for you to ensure that this dehumanization ends and that while you're incarcerated, you truly can have a life of rehabilitation versus a life of extreme punishment. Thank you so much.